Let's go ahead and move on to the uh, Joe Rogan episode. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. So you might have seen online, a lot of doctors are calling for Joe Rogan's, uh, censorship of Joe Rogan's podcast, specifically asking Spotify to take it down. Now, this is interesting because the 270 doctors that keeps getting cited, let's put this up there on the screen. Yeah, it turns out most of them are not medical doctors. <laughs> they are PhDs, which, listen, I'm not saying they don't have the title doctor, but if you're going to go ahead and tout 270 doctors, say that Joe Rogan's podcast is full of misinformation, and one of them is like assistant professor at the Federal University of Santa Catarina, well, I've got some questions. And it turns out that... Some of these people are like postdoctoral fellows. Some of them are psychologists. Some of them are editors. Some of them are professors. Some of them are psychotherapists. The point, one of them is a vet, is a veterinarian. One of them I is mean, a podcast host, apparently. Oh, okay. <laughs> Teachers, engineers, social yes. workers. I'm not even sure they all have PhDs. Yeah. I'm not clear on I'm that. not even, I'm not denigrating these folks whatsoever. I am actually blaming the media for taking it so seriously and then gaslighting folks into thinking that the majority of these people, whenever you hear 270 doctors, mm -hmm. are not actual doctors. And the way that they present this is just so utterly disingenuous. And we saw a perfect representative of that on CNN in the way that they covered this story. Take a listen. And, and Joe Rogan, uh, so significant here because it's the most listened to podcast in the world. Uh, millions of people listen to each episode. Have you heard anything quickly from uh, Spotify? No, we have not. Okay, I have not so, personally. So we reached out to Spotify. We reached out to Joe Rogan. We've not heard anything. But I want to read to you what uh, Spotify said, uh, the statement they released back in April after Joe Rogan said that he would advise a 21-year-old against getting vaccinated. This is what Spotify said. Spotify prohibits content on the platform which promotes dangerous, false, deceptive, or misleading content about COVID-19 that may cause offline harm and or pose a direct threat to public health. When content that violates this standard is identified, it is removed from the platform. Form. Is that not good enough? Or what do you think about that? Well, it's just not being enforced, right? I mean, if we talk about the word prohibit, that would mean it would not be allowed to air. I know that YouTube removed the video version of the podcast, but that podcast is still available on Spotify. And that is a problem because it is clearly... No, oh, it's clearly misinformation. By the way, I went and I looked it up. It took me two seconds to find. Same doctor, June of 2020, during the Floyd protest, said, go ahead and protest because racism is still a public health crisis. These people are so full of it. It drives me completely crazy. And, you know, she actually happens to be one of the real doctors who presents herself. But who arbitrated and made you the person who gets to decide what is online and what is not? Here's I mean, a, Here's the other thing that really bothers me. Yeah. We, we talked about the uh, Robert Malone yeah, podcast. that's right. And I had my issues with right. that, which we litigated. We're going to have Dr. Prasad on actually to go through yes. all of the claims that have been made. He's a doctor. He seems MD, to have MPH. Yeah. nuanced, fact-based, um, non-ideological yes. approach to these things. So we'll wait and go through the claims with him. But, you know, we just did the segment on Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And all of the government propaganda and misinformation propagated by people like CNN's own Natasha Bertrand and uh, somehow that doesn't alarm them. That doesn't make them want to censor That's and labor as misinformation. And listen, I want to be careful about how I say this because you guys know I am very pro-vax. I am vaxxed. I am boosted. My kids are vaxxed, at least the ones who are old enough to have received the vaccination. And I think that it is a good idea for yourself and your community to get vaccinated. I looked at the numbers yesterday in preparation for this segment from the Mayo Clinic. Mm of what percent of the U.S. adult population has been vaccinated at this point. For both of the oldest age ranges to have received at least one dose, it was near 100%. Yes, I know. If you're over 75, near 100% of those individuals who are the most at risk have received a dose. If you're older than 65, near 100, very, very high numbers have gotten vaccinated at this point, okay? So I think we also have created in the media this perception of a much larger pool of totally unvaccinated people 
than actually exists. This is so true. And they fixate on it like it's the only problem in society and it's the only place where there is misinformation and bad information and like it's a, a sort of unique evil. And I just think if you look at the landscape of problems and lies coming out of the media, of the media, like it's very hard to make the case that this is the worst example. Not to mention, it's such a lazy way to deal with the problem. Again, we're having Dr. Prasad on. You know what he did when he saw things that he didn't agree with and didn't think was backed by the science? He wrote a lengthy post yes. going through each of the claims saying, oh, this one's supported, here's the debt. This one's not, this one's a mixed bag. Do that. Actually take the time instead of just being like, they're wrong, they're evil, and let's take it down. Take the time to go through, rebut the claims, lay out the evidence, and make the case. That would actually take time and brain power, though. And also, by the way, the regime of just censoring and just pushing people off of the platform. Joe Rogan is extremely popular in some ways a competitor to CNN, yeah. so it's very convenient there. It's also very convenient for politicians who get to say, it's not my fault that, you know, it's not our fault that people have no trust in institutions and they're not taking ba basic public health seriously. It's these few bad actors. And so they can sort of scapegoat um, people who, you know, they put in the bad actor category, whether it's Joe Rogan or anyone else, and it lets them off the hook for their own complete manifest failures in yeah. this regard. And I'll end it with this way, which is that there was a clip going around in which Joe actually invited a guy from Australia, Josh Sheps, to defend Australia's lockdown policy and argue with him about COVID on the show. And while they were having a debate, he did something you will never see on CNN. They were both arguing over claims around myocarditis, and Joe had Jamie pull it up and look it up and got corrected in real time on the show. Show me one instance of that happening on CNN, MSNBC, or on Fox. It will never happen. Take a listen and watch how he comports himself. Where there's an adverse risk associated with the vaccine. It's like yes. a two to four fold increase in the instances of myocarditis. Yes, but you know what? Hospitalization. The, you know that there's COVID. an increased risk of myocarditis in among that age cohort from getting COVID as well, which exceeds the risk of myocarditis from the vaccine. I don't think that's true. I don't think it it's is. true. I don't. No, no, no. I don't think it's true that there's an increased risk of myocarditis from people catching COVID that are young versus increased risk of myocarditis from the vaccine. No, there is. There's both. Pro well, let's look that up because I don't think that's true. <laughs> There's myocarditis is more common after COVID-19 infection than vaccination. But is this with children? Uh, yeah, we're talking about young people. Men and boys aged under 30 after this is what it says here. With, with children is the issue. Well, no, we were talking about 15-year-olds. Well, we're talking about young children. Male so, child. Yes, 12 to 17. 12 to 17, more likely to build myocarditis within three months of catching COVID at a rate of 450 cases per million infection. This compares to 67 cases of myocarditis per million at the same time following their second dose of Pfizer. Yeah, so you're about eight times likely to get myocarditis from getting COVID than from getting the vaccine. That's interesting. Now, that, that is said, not what I've read before, but also it's like... When, even when we're reading these things, it's like, what are we getting this from? Is this from well, the VAERS the report? But even from the VAERS reports, when they report this stuff, it's like the amount of people that report, the, um, like it's the under-reporting. Show me, show me somebody on CNN who does that. You can't. That's my point. Well, and then is, he shares it himself. Yeah, and then he <laughs> tweeted it out with sources. And he was like, well, here's why I was confused. And here's what it says. And I still like Jeff Seps. And here's a Substatic article actually by Vinay Prasad. So, look. In terms of figuring out what's right or not, I would put him much closer to determining the truth than the people over at CNN. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.